The reenactments and commentary in this program may contain frank talk of a sexual nature. Viewer discretion is advised. A shower scene not made so popular since the movie Psycho and the looming specter of Macaulay Culkin. The plot thickens at Neverland and in that Santa Maria courtroom. Hello, I'm James Curtis. Welcome to E's coverage of the Michael Jackson trial. Jackson appeared upbeat as he and his family and his entourage went through security at the courthouse in Santa Maria, California. And now before we hear the shocking allegations from Jackson's former maid, we're going to pick up with the cross-examination of the maid's son. Defense attorney Tom Mezzo tries to punch some holes in the young man's story. Here's what the jury heard according to the courtroom transcripts. Well, you told the police you had a blackout and didn't remember anything after, after you and Mr. Jackson were tickling each other, right? I blocked it out. I didn't blank it out. I just didn't, never wanted to repeat that stuff again. Okay. Do you remember in one of your police interviews, the police telling you, this is what happened, right? And you said, well, I'll have to work on that. Do you remember using words like that? No. Early in your interviews, you denied being touched in your private areas, didn't you? Yeah, I was scared. They were pretty long interviews, weren't they? I believe so. Yeah, they were. They were long in my time. To a kid, an hour is a long time. Do you remember in your first police interview in 1993, telling the police, I'll just say this out flat, I don't remember him trying anything with me except for the tickling. Do you remember that? Do I remember saying that? Yes. No, but I've heard that on The Voice. Yeah, I was fighting them with everything I had. Well, determined to discredit this extremely damaging testimony, the defense attorney, Tom Mesrell, still hammers away at the now 24-year-old's claim of having been molested by Michael Jackson as a preteen. Have you had a chance to look at that? Does it refresh your recollection about what you told the police in that interview? No, not really. Well, on a number of occasions, you told them, we tickled each other and then I left didn't you? Words to that effect? Yeah, again, I was fighting with everything I had. I'm not asking you what you were doing. I'm just asking if that's true, okay? On a number of occasions, you said, we just tickled each other and then I left, right? Okay. Is that correct? Yes, and then I also told them that he molested me. On many occasions in that interview, you denied being molested, didn't you? Yeah, at first. And the police kept leaning on you to admit you had been molested, true? It wasn't like a twisting the arm. It was, I was again fighting. I didn't want to be embarrassed at school. I didn't want to be embarrassed anywhere. I was 13. So you were lying to the police? Yeah, I was at first. And in that 1993 interview, when it came to talking about what happened at the arcade, you didn't know if he'd really touched you improperly, right? I knew. Well, you kept responding, I don't know. And then you'd say, if he really did touch, it was in the arcade. No. And you were asked, do you think he did it? And you said, I don't know. I knew. That seems Howard Ricky shines off today in light of uh, Johnny Cochran's funeral. Uh, we'll talk about that as far as having a major impact, Johnny Cochran, as well as you, Howard, having dealt with, uh, with the 1993 allegations. This credible, this testimony seems rather credible despite these assertions of contradiction by Mesro, does it not? Sure, because as I mentioned yesterday, it seems to be a rather, quote unquote, to quote myself, benign mm -hmm. incident. It's not the kind of activity when we think of as being this grotesque kind of child molestation. And because it is this light touching and tickling, it seems to have the ring of truth, which is difficult for Michael Jackson. Th this is a very difficult witness to cross-examine, and you, you can't really be heavy-handed. You can just point out to the jury the inconsistencies, the fact that he conceded lying, which, by the way, is a test of credibility, uh, yeah. um, in, in addition to an argument that if he lied once, he lied again. 
very, very difficult to even punch holes in this witness's testimony. You, you just have to kind of back him off a bit and say to the jury, look, you really can't tell what happened. He said one thing when it was fresh in his mind. He's saying something 10 years later. Can the defense, though, take the risk of conceding the credibility of this witness? No, no, no not, not. not a chance. They've got to fight it. They have to fight it because it's a molestation. By any other word, it's still but a molestation. But can't they say, look, one, they never went to the police. He's not charged with this molestation and that the prosecution is simply trying to muddy the water and taint the yes, jury yes. Yes. something that may have happened, but this one that you're here, folks, but that's, still didn't happen. But that's the argument on his credibility. If he was credible enough 10 or 12 years ago, they would have used him as a victim and charged exactly. the crime, exactly. but they didn't. And then there's that ever-present issue about why didn't anyone about that incident go to the police? It was never, ever charged, folks. Moving on. If the witness was molested as a boy, as I just said, the question has to be why won't charges why weren't charges ever filed? Team Jackson thinks they have the answer. Okay. Now without going into any amounts, when did you ever receive any money? From Michael? From a settlement. Oh. In your case. From the settlement? Without going into any amounts, just when did you receive any money? When I turned eighteen. Okay, without going into any amounts, do you know if your mother has received any money from Mr. Jackson? She has. Do you know approximately when she received money from a settlement? I don't. Okay, do you know if it was before you did? I think it was. And a quick note, as with Gavin's actor double, if you will, this actor bears no actual resemblance to the individual Jason who uh, he's uh, giving the testimony on behalf of. But, as we said yesterday, apparently, according to reports coming out of the courtroom, Gavin and Jason do resemble, in real life, each other. Yes, That's which big. is part of the issue, because, as Howard knows, they also resemble Jordy. Yes, that, that is correct. You know, this is a perfect example of why the, the amendment to the evidence code and the enactment of 1108 is really scary. And let's just clarify, Jordy is the 1993 alleged accuser. And the big settlement the that big Howard settlement. and Johnny Cochran yes. did. Yeah. yeah. Um, now you get this witness in, it's very difficult to tell whether or what he's truthful about, but he seems credible. The jury does not have to make a finding beyond a reasonable doubt. It's kind of a preponderance of the evidence, yeah. which means... A, a feather. Well, define a feather. That. Define, <laughs> that real quick. define that real quick. Well, it, it's very simple. It's, it's the slightest on the scales of justice. I want to believe, I don't want to believe you know, for the, the lay people or, or jurors. Preponderance of the evidence means this much more, one way or the other. Beyond a reasonable doubt is a very big burden to overcome. And that certainly to a lot of folks in the public seems unfair. Prosecutors, I was one of them, we love that preponderance of the evidence standard. However, when you look at it in this context, it could give you a little pause. When we return, a door swings slowly open to reveal a shocking scene. Stay with us. The reenactments and commentary in this program may contain frank talk of a sexual nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back. The son of Michael Jackson's former maid proved to be a formidable opponent in the form of a witness, if you will, for the defense team, a very strong witness for the prosecution. Will his mother be equally effective? Here's what the jurors heard according to the courtroom transcripts. Did you know a person by the name of Wade... Yeah. Who was Wade? He was a young kid, a young little boy. How old was Wade when you first met him? Probably eight, seven or eight. Wade was there for quite some time? Yes. All right. And during that time, are you aware of him staying any place other than Michael Jackson's bedroom? No, he'll stay there as far as I know. Now, your obligation, of course, was not just to clean up, but to do the linens? Yes. The sheets off the beds, is that right? Change. You said that there were two beds. Uh-huh, yeah. At least. Were there more than two beds in his suite or just two? No, just two. Did you make the beds every single day? Yes. During the time that Wade was there, how many beds did you make? One or more than one? Just that one. The one that was Mr. Jackson's bed? Yeah, the one upstairs was rarely used. Next, an indelible image or improbable story. Was there an occasion that you went into Michael Jackson's room and came upon Michael Jackson and Wade 
Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Did I what? Come into Michael Jackson's room and discover that Michael Jackson was there with Wade. Yeah. Okay. Was there an occasion when you went in and they were in the shower? Objection. Leading. Sustained. Did you ever come in and find them in a situation that made you uncomfortable? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Do you understand what I'm asking? That I was what? Where you were uncomfortable. You found them and you were uncomfortable. Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Well, I came one time and in the bedroom. Uh -huh. And first I thought they were playing. Objection. And non-responsive. Sustained. All right. The question was yes or no. Yes. Okay. Tell us what you heard when you first walked in the room. Laughing. Okay. And playing, like playing around. Okay, and what did you do? I came in and I, first I thought that they were playing in the bathtub, jacuzzi, and I didn't see them. And then I thought they were outside, playing outside the house. Uh, I mean, in his garden. And I walked and they were in the shower. And what did you see? And I hear this playing around. That's where he was taking a shower, I guess. Okay. With little Wade. What did you see? Tell me what you I, saw. What I saw, I just saw some clothes on the floor. You saw clothes on the floor in the bathroom or in the bedroom? No, in the shower. In? By the shower. By the shower. What clothing did you see on the floor? Underwear. Underwear? Mm. More than one pair? Yeah. Objection. Leading. Overrule. Next question. How many pair did you see? Two. Two pair of underwear? Yeah. Did you recognize the underwear? Yeah. And how did you happen to recognize the underwear? The um, Mr. Jackson's, I knew they were white, and the little boy, they were colored. All right. They were little underwear. Can you describe the little boy's underwear? They were little green underwear. Green underwear? Uh-huh. I had, like, a neon color. Neon green? Yeah. Just in case he lost them? You did his underwear previously, didn't you? You had washed his underwear previously? Uh-huh. Did you know Wade underwear? Yeah. Okay. They have little, you know, characters like Spider-Man and things like that. Child's? Child's. A small child's underwear? Yeah. Howard, a problematic issue that I'm, I'm picking up here, and this testimony in and of itself is pretty strong, pretty damning, creates outrageous, a severe image, right? Opinion. Yeah. It, it was just, just outrageous. First of all, there is no way to come in and testify as I understand it. Uh, there is no individual to come in and testify I was in a shower and Michael Jackson touched me inappropriately. This is as bad as it gets. This, in my opinion, is reversible error. It paints a dark and evil picture of Michael Jackson when nothing inappropriate might have taken place. Yes, I don't think Michael Jackson has any business taking a shower as an adult with kids that aren't his own. But that's not a crime, yeah. and this jurors, these jurors are led to believe that's criminal conduct. It's, you know what's really disturbing about this for me? I understand, because uh, having watched TV and the talk shows yesterday about the mobs you coming... TV? By the mobs <laughs> coming forward, you know, and serial pedophile and hang him and yeah. do all this stuff. The reality is this. This is what disturbs me. Little Wade, now quite an adult, and Macaulay Calkin deny that they were ever molested. So here we have the government in its effort to get Michael Jackson, understandably they believe it's under the rules of evidence, but they, in this effort, they are in their own way victimizing Wade, now an adult, and Macaulay Calkin. Which brings that me to, disturbs which me. Which brings me to the related issue of what I'm calling trolling on the part of the prosecution or on the part of uh, law enforcement at the time. According to all of these kids, Gavin, this young man Jason, and any other alleged victim that we know of, they never told their parents initially. It was a result of, after the 93 allegation, um, that law enforcement just called in every kid they apparently knew to be associated with Michael Jackson and started questioning them. Well, According to the defense, well, actually, started grilling them. Now, Howard, you were there. How did Howard. that go? Yeah. I, I was there. They did troll, to use your phrase, and interview everybody and their brother, and th there were no incidents that they found sufficient enough to bring a prosecution. What is scary here is they're putting on evidence of alleged victims that they, the so-called victims, say Didn't they listen. weren't victims. And evidence that does not amount to a crime in any state, as far as we know, at least to the extent of being in the shower with a young person not related to you. As the former mate's testimony continues, it indeed gets steamy. In that bathroom, is there a shower curtain? No. 
What is there in that bathroom? A glass door. A glass door. Is it a glass door that is fogged or is it a glass door that is clear? It's clear, but at that time it was smoky. Okay, smoky? Cloudy. Cloudy. From the shower? Yeah. All right. When there's no shower going, can you see through the glass? Yeah. On this occasion, when the shower was going, could you see through the glass? No. Could you see any figure at all? What could you see? Ask and answer. I saw a figure. Hold on. Just a minute. The objection is overruled. I saw a figure is the answer. Go ahead. Did you see more than one figure? Yeah. All right. Did you recognize either of the figures that you saw? Mr. Jackson. All right. And the little kid. Was one figure larger than the other? Yeah. Was the second figure the size of Wade? Yeah. Yes. What did you do at that point? That he was going to get mad or... Objection, non-responsive. Sustained. Move to strike. What did you do at the time that you saw Mr. Jackson and Wade R***ing in the shower? What did you do then? I was going to talk to them, but then I thought, no, I better not, so I just went back. Next, the witness who, for an El Salvadorian immigrant, sounds a lot like someone from the Bronx, suddenly sees Michael Jackson's affection for her son in a new light. Just tell us what you saw with Jason. Well, he was sitting on his lap. Okay. And what concerned you? And I walked in, and he was sitting on his lap, and Mr. Jackson was just reclining, reclining to the back. Reclining? Reclining to the back. Okay. And having my son in his lap. And where was Jason positioned on his lap? His legs. Okay. And what did you do? I just told my son to get out. And he was. I remember he say, no, I'm fine. Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. You told your son to get out? Just a moment. Stricken. You told your son to get out? Yeah. Did he do so? No. What did you do then? I think I pushed him and, oh, he was some kind of reading a book or coloring. And Mr. Jackson say, I want him to read. Or I'm reading a story, something like that. Did you take your son off of his lap? Yeah. Yes. Raises the specter, Ricky doesn't it, with respect to these parents protecting or not protecting their kids in the presence of Michael Jackson. Thank you very much. Yes, it does. And one of the things that someone will say is they're going to say, well, she was a housekeeper for him. She was making less than $20,000 a year. This was her lifeline that she couldn't afford to protest. But the reality is, if it were true that she sees one little boy in the shower, she's picking up underwear from some other little boy or that same boy, and then she sees her own son in his lap, get him out of there. And she's not so traumatized that she doesn't take 20 grand, we'll learn a little while, from a uh, tabloid news show. Look, to me, this actually seems contrived. Um, why do we care if she feels uncomfortable? You know what? If Michael Jackson did what he's been accused of by uh, Gavin, then he should be convicted and punished appropriately. I want to see that evidence. I want to convict him on those alleged acts. I don't want somebody come in that tells me they're uncomfortable when they saw nothing criminal take place. I just think it's wrong. Well, I don't think it's necessarily wrong in and of itself, but certainly that alone doesn't give us evidence of wrongdoing. Uh, but then again, we don't really count. It's the jurors who need to make that determination about its merit. When we return, I've told you at this trial, we're going to have at least one celebrity a day. And although Ricky and Howard and Sean are quite famous in their own right, not talking about them. And this next celebrity whose name comes up would probably rather be left home alone. Stay with us. Reenactments and commentary in this program may contain frank talk of a sexual nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back. 
Under questioning by Assistant District Attorney Ron Zonin, Michael Jackson's former personal maid tells jurors about another house guest. At the time, this young star, although not quite as famous as the king of pop himself, really had a following in his own right. Here's what happened according to the courtroom transcripts. Do you know who Macaulay Culkin is? Yes. Who is Macaulay Culkin? The little kid from the movies. Yes. Did you ever see Macaulay Culkin? Yes. Personally? Where did you see him? At the Neverland, at the ranch. Did Macaulay Culkin come with any other family members that you recall? Yeah. I remember him with his father and mother. Father and mother? And the other kids. Other? Brothers and sisters. Other siblings? Yes. Did you ever see Macaulay Culkin in Mr. Jackson's bedroom? Yes. Were his possessions there in the bedroom? Yeah, I don't remember. That you don't recall? No. Do you recall if you ever washed his clothing, as you did Wade? Yeah. The idea here, 1108, this new evidence code section, it's a weapon for the prosecution, and they're using it for all it's worth right well, now. Well, you have to say that they have a right to use it. The law says that they have a right to use it, and if I were prosecuting the case, I would use it too. And right. the difference is, Howard, just so everybody's reminded and clear, is that unlike the law previous to 1108, that is the evidence code section, you ha they have to be essentially similar, sort of cookie cutter, some resemblance, some uh, pattern, if it's you will. It's supposed to be prior conduct that yeah. one could find is criminal. We have this, this former housekeeper telling us she's uncomfortable about what she sees regarding Wade, Wade and Macaulay Culkin, but Wade and Macaulay Culkin do not come in and tell us th that anything was wrong. Michael has already conceded he slept in a bed with kids. We might not approve of it, but there's no testimony anybody yeah. did anything yeah, it wrong. It doesn't quite get there. On a sad note, as we change gears slightly, today was the funeral for a giant of the legal profession, legendary defense attorney, our friend Johnny Cochran. His life was celebrated by attorneys, by celebrities, by members of the community who cared so deeply about him. And certainly, Johnny, you will be, be missed. A unique, one-of-a-kind individual. A few seconds left. Howard, well, Ricky. We in Los Angeles, and I think the global community, will miss the Johnny Cochran. And I just want to say good night, Johnny. Good night, Johnny. That's it for us for today. Be sure to watch our exclusive coverage of the Michael Jackson trial Monday through Friday, 7.30 p.m. only on E! And indeed, good night, Johnny.